Yeah, so these uh, tracks, you know, they come together. We have these pieces that just go in so nicely like that. And, you know, you can make, uh, get a straight piece of track, you know, put them together like that. And then you can just go crazy with it and do something like this. And, uh, and the really nice thing with that, Jonathan, is that mm -hmm. this all comes apart. It stores very nicely. Oh, yes, that's the thing um, I this, love this, about it. This, a lot of people like our um, aluminum tracks, which are terrific. Um, but if you're looking for something that saves a little bit of space and is easy to set up and you can do some really neat designs with, oh, then yeah. this is the way you go. I mean, so then I'm going to get out of your way okay. here. I'm going to move over here and I'm going to let you show them how to use this. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, even if you don't use the curved parts, I mean, just having these nice short pieces of track, it's, it's great for storage. Um, yeah. So here, um, what I have set up here is just, uh, you know, to have a track starting up at a higher point and then comes down, it's a little flat, and then it comes back up again. And the point here, what I'm kind of trying to demonstrate today, is about conservation of energy. And as you can see, I came uh, dressed for the occasion. You can see, uh, got the back as well. Um, so um, what I'm going to do here to demonstrate conservation of um, energy is I have a smart cart, and I also have a motion sensor on top of the smart cart. Now, the smart cart's going to measure the velocity um, so we can measure the kinetic energy. And then the motion sensor is going to measure the height. Hence why I have this track upside down. So the um, signal from the motion sensor is gonna bounce off the track and come back um, to measure the height. Um, you don't necessarily need to use a track like this. Um, you know, if you could actually, I actually first tried this by going under the table, but that didn't look so well on camera. So. Um, and you could also, if you have a flat ceiling, you could do that as well if your ceiling's not too high. Um, but for this case, I just use track and that works pretty well. And um, so let's uh, take a look on the computer. Um, let me set this up over here for a moment. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna get out of the way here. Oops, no, not yet. These carts have a mind of their own sometimes. There we go. Okay, let me move this out of the way. So um, I'm not sure if you can see my screen right now, but uh, um, I have Capstone open, and what I'm going to measure on the screen is just uh, velocity and height simultaneously, and we'll see um, you know, how they relate to each other. So I'll go ahead and uh, get this started. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, what we see on, um, uh, for the data. So you can see the um, velocity um, is in blue. So as it goes down the track, as time goes on, um, the speed increases. And then once it gets to the most lowest point, we see that it's, uh, it's constant at that point, and then it's, uh, goes back up here and then we have another constant section where it's flat over there. And uh, we can also see with the height, um, they look kind of uh, almost like a mirror reflection of each other. And, uh, and one strange thing though is that we have these little bumps that are around 1.6 seconds and uh, about 2.1 seconds. And that seems to be when it's going along the curve section. I'm not 100% sure what is causing those bumps. I've been trying to work that out all week. Um, I thought it might have something to do with flexing in the track. Interestingly, the um, bumps don't occur when I take the motion sensor off, so I don't know if there's some, like, some rotational thing going on here. But uh, if you have any ideas, maybe you can leave them in the comments and you can help me out. Um, so we, uh, so we can see velocity and um, height in this graph on capstone. So what's the relationship between the two? So um, what if we graph velocity versus height? Um, what will we see there? So let's take a look at the screen at this point. So there's velocity on the uh, vertical axis and height on the horizontal axis. Um, not quite a linear relationship there, so um, I guess it's not velocity versus height, I mean, in order to get a linear relationship, 
huh, I wonder what I need to do to one of those variables. I, 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 I can't always, I, I never can remember this. Oh, of course, square. <laughs> See, that's why you need this shirt. You gotta remind yourself. That's a very handy device. Oh, it is, yeah. Your, whenever you don't remember what it is you're teaching today, just wear it. Exactly. So, um, uh, Capstone has this really cool feature where it's called quick calcs. So you can just uh, quickly change uh, the calculation of one of the variables. So you can see here I got v, v squared, and with, I can't see it with on my screen. <laughs> Let's see, v cubed, square root of v. Let's try v squared, since it's on the shirt. And oh, that's a pretty nice linear relationship. Not perfect, but um, close enough. Now let's take a look at the energy. So we don't measure energy. I mean, this is not an energy sensor. It's a you know, we have a velocity sensor. Well, actually, it's more of a position sensor, but you get the point. Um, but what we can do in Capstone is we can um, do calculations. So I open up the calculator in Capstone. I've already entered in the mass previously, um, measured that uh, earlier today. And you can see, actually, you can see my um, calculation for the height on line two, um, which I just did um, in inverse of the position, uh, not inverse negative. And here on line three, we got kinetic energy, so one half times the mass times velocity squared. And of course, the potential energy, where we have the mass times the acceleration due to the gravity and multiplied by the height. And then on line five, I have the total mechanical energy, um, adding kinetic energy and potential energy. So let's see how those um, graph out. Let me get this out of the way. So you can see on the graph, we have um, kinetic energy in green, potential energy in pink, and then total mechanical energy in blue. And what you notice here, you notice that as the kinetic energy is increasing, the potential energy is decreasing. And during the whole time, pretty much the whole time, except for those two bumps, the total mechanical energy is staying the same. It's conserved. So um, I think this is, I mean, there's many ways you can do conservation of energy experiments. I think this is just uh, another fun way that you can do it. And uh, one nice thing is we actually do have a complete set that we um, sell. It's, I think it's called the Smart Cart um, uh, Curve Track System that you can build this entire thing, this part on the bottom, with that system. It also comes with the, um, the stands as well. It comes with a smart cart. It doesn't come with a motion sensor but, uh, or this top track. But, uh, um, but these other things, yeah, there's, there's a lot of other things you could do with that. You can you know, do a potential well. You can, you can make all sorts of configurations. So um, there you go. Mr. Jonathan Hanna and great demonstrations with conservation of energy. And Jonathan, by chance, if I wanted to get that shirt, am I able to get that shirt? Um, not the I, one that you're wearing. Not the one that I'm wearing. Right. <laughs> Where might I be able to, uh, Brett, can people order this shirt? This is really a neat thing. Are people... No, Oh. Workshops at oh, workshop at AAPT. Oh, great yeah, so shirt. This is, yeah, not many of these out there. So I don't know, maybe check eBay in a few uh, hours, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and put it up there. Yeah. Right. Well, that's an awesome shirt. Excellent. Thank you, Jonathan Hanna, for joining us.